Hey everybody, TJ here. You might be asking yourself, what is me time? Well, the thing is, during the 25 days of custom Amiibo cards, I approached you guys every day for 25 straight days asking your advice about what custom move set to use for the Amiibo cards that we were setting up for the second season of Me Be Me. I really had a lot of fun with the back and forth and you guys gave such great suggestions and you're such an amazing community that I thought it would be fun to maybe do that, maybe not every day because we're all busy, but if I could just have a, a format where I can bring up a topic that interests me related to gaming in some way or another and and give you guys my feelings about it and, and more of an opinion based show and at the same time those of you who are so inclined share with me your opinion and maybe we could just have that that uh, washing machine of ideas and uh, hopefully we can inspire each other or at the very least have some interesting conversation now uh, you may recognize some of the other shows that I'm responsible for. I'm the creator of Smash Supremacy, Me Be Me, and Custom Conquest. All three of those shows are very me-driven. Uh, not me, but me. Well, also me, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, my me personas are actually kind of segmented and separated, divided into two parts of the same whole. Uh, I like to think of TJ as my exuberant childhood self. Like if I never matured beyond the age of 10, that excitement that I always felt about video games and about fighting and about everything that really excited me and still excites me today, I still get that. Uh, Nintendo has a way of bringing that out in me. That just the charm from Nintendo properties, and I love it. And so, so TJ encapsulates that aspect of my personality. And then there are things that the jaded adult side can't help but feel, and that's encapsulated in dark TJ. Uh, like getting frustrated about amiibo shortages, or being disappointed that a game didn't live up to my expectations, or that the controls of a game don't make sense to me. So for the purposes of entertainment, they're, they're both very extreme personality types. Neither one of them fully represents me, uh, but they both are aspects of things that I feel. I, 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 I strive to be more like TJ. He's kind of the hero that I wish I could be, or that I, I aspire to be. And Dark TJ is the shadow lord that I hope I never become. <laughs> He's the, the dark side that you try to push away. But for the purposes of this show, I, it's going to be a loose format. All, all of the other shows that I work on are, are pretty high production, and it requires a lot of time, and it's really intensive. But this is just going to be a relaxed opportunity for me to talk to you and hopefully for you to get engaged and respond back to me. I don't know if this is going to be something that catches on, so pl let me know if it's something that interests you, if you have any interest in what I think about things at all, or if you would prefer that I just keep my opinions to myself. I know Dark TJ has a time keeping a hard time keeping his opinions to himself. So, since this is an opinion-based show, I think it's really important that we cross our T's and dot our J's. Let's get all that business out of the way right up front. The views and opinions expressed here are ours alone and do not necessarily reflect those of this channel or its affiliates. And we reserve the right to alter them at any time if it's convenient or because we feel like it. So, take this. Now, now that we got that settled, let's move on to the first topic. Uh, Me Be Me Season 2 just launched, and I appreciate everybody checking it out, all of the support that we've gotten, uh, all of the Patreon supporters, thank you very much, you guys made that possible. Everyone who watches it, likes it, shares it, you guys are what it's all about. It's, it's fun for me to make, and hopefully it is also in return fun for you to watch as an experience. Some of you have been noticing some of the differences between Season 1. I guess the biggest difference is, instead of it being uh, TJ versus Dark TJ, We've divided into three teams, and TJ and Dark TJ are on the same team, but we're going up against the personalities of Nintendo Wire, Amiibo Jason, and Happily Candied, and then also the voices behind the Toys for Games cast podcast, Jason Inquires and Josh Brown, aka The Noise. So I really, in I really enjoy sharing this experience with those guys. They are awesome people. It's a ton of fun, and 
it's interesting to see how the Amiibos are going to settle this because I, I don't know. And it's a little bit interesting to test them out and see which ones win in which fights. So it, the fact that it's a three-way battle and that TJ and Dark TJ are on the same team is obviously the biggest difference. But the other thing that a lot of you have mentioned is there is no voice acting during the fight sequences. In the first season, uh, I got a lot of comments about the voice acting on both ends of the spectrum. Some people were like, wow, the boy voice acting really enhances the experience. It, it pumps it up to the next level. And other people were like, what is this garbage? This is the garbageiest garbage that ever garbaged in the history of trash. And you can't put yourself out there without expecting a certain degree of criticism. So I don't take anything personally. And I accept that the content that I create is not for everyone. And I love that there are people who enjoy it. You're obviously the people who I'm making it for. And if other people watch it and they find that it is not for them, I'm totally okay with that. And I also appreciate a healthy degree of criticism because it, it even when it's a really bad criticism, like people are not even trying to be constructive, they're just trying to make insulting comments. I try to find the spirit of the comment. What is it about it that they don't like? Some people are just out to be jerks and they want to be heard and that's okay because I don't take it personally. Uh, but for season two, there is not the voice acting, so I was a little curious to see where that would fall. I, I assumed that there would be probably some people who would miss it, the people who enjoyed it from the first season, and people who it really turned off of in the first season might like the second season better. Let me explain exactly why there is not voice acting in the second season. Uh, you may have seen the making of Mevi Me, where I had Jason Inquires, I'm sorry, <laughs> Amiibo Jason and Happily Candied help me out with just kind of showing you the process that I went through to make the ADR for the first season. And it didn't really take that long. Some of you have been curious about how I scripted it, and some people even thought that I went to great lengths to script it. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I do not have time for that. I barely have time to spit out the content that, as it is, I cannot be wasting any time writing stuff down. So my process for recording the ADR was exactly what you saw in the making of episode. I would watch the fight once and record the dialogue for TJ, and then I would watch it a second time and I would record the dialogue for Dark TJ and all of the fight sound effects that they do because I can't do them both at the same time since both the, the, the action is so frantic in a smash fight that it would be impossible. And then I just composite the two of them together in post and I don't really take a lot of time to do it. So what you're seeing in the first season of Me V Me is literally two takes every time. There was never a time where I did more than one take because I don't have the time to do more than one take. With the second season, it's not really practical for a, n a number of reasons. The first reason is it is in this case to the detriment of the experience. When we did the making of, it was four fighters and four voices. And that was really straining the limits of, of audio pollution where we all did separate passes and all of us are wall-to-wall -wall sound, so we're all talking at all times. And you can't do that. You have to cherry-pick the better moments so that if somebody says something interesting or a character has a, a big hit, you want to highlight that. And what that means is you're dropping out the sound of the other characters in that moment so that it's you can direct the ear to hear what you want them to hear. And I would, with that particular episode, just find the best moments and, and use those ones. With... Me V Me, I did the same thing with TJ and Dark TJ. There were also four characters, but they weren't all speaking characters. The characters who are in Smash already have their stock sound effects that they're triggered to make by the certain moves that they're performing. So pretty much what I did with TJ and Dark TJ was what Nintendo did not do with the Me Fighters. Obviously, they needed to make the Me Fighters generic enough so that no matter who was playing them, it felt appropriate. My goal was to try to give them the sounds that they would have if Nintendo made a TJ and Dark TJ figure, character, in the game. Uh, but with second season, that's a lot of noise. Because 
In addition to the three characters that are me characters, there are three Nintendo fighters. So that's already six characters that are generating noise. And they're generating noise before any audio or ADR is added from us. So I had a couple options. I could continue to record the audio from either TJ or Dark TJ because they don't compete at the same time in the second season, but it was never gonna be a possibility to be able to, for each episode, record the Jasons or Lauren and Josh because we're states apart. I live in Los Angeles, California, and Josh is on the West Coast, but considerably north of me. Jason Inquires is on the East Coast, and as you probably know, Jason and Happily Candy live in Wisconsin. So we're really far apart. Getting in the same room is an impossibility. I could circulate the fight, and we could all independently record our dialogue, but that would turn each fight into a very lengthy production. And then I would also have, none of us would be aware of what the other people were doing. So I would be trying to sort out what was the best and highlight the best per episode. And then even in the final mix down, you would have six characters making sounds all at the same time. And uh, I did a few tests with it. It's a lot of noise pollution. So ultimately, what creates the most satisfying experience is to just let the action do the talking. And I know that for some people that is a little bit of a letdown, so I apologize if you miss the voices from TJ and Dark TJ. First of all, if you're one of the people who enjoyed it, thank you so much. I, it, it's, it makes me really happy to know that there are people out there who appreciated the effort that I put in to do it. It was a little bit of an extra step. And it, I could have just as easily let the, the Amiibo do their job and let the machine work without making the, adding that personal touch. But it made it more fun for me. And that it also enhanced the experience for some of you guys. I love that. So thank you. Uh, so back to season two. I know I'm jumping around. Sorry, I don't have a script. So this is all off the cuff. It, and with the second season, it just became very impractical. So in addition to how much it would add to the production process and how it may actually result in a diminished quality final product, it made more sense not to have it. But you still get to hear us introduce our fighters at the beginning of the fight and you get to see us do our little victory dances or uh, our dejected defeat dances or whatever it is that you call it when we lose. So if you've been enjoying the show, please keep tuning in. I love it. Uh, keep leaving your comments. To everyone who's been keeping track and keeping track of the wins and the order, that's, that's awesome. I love that. Thank you for that level of investment. And that moves me into the first topic. I know I've been talking forever, but uh, it moves me into this episode's topic, which is voice acting in games in general. I consider myself extremely blessed for the time that I was born. I was born at a time when the first Legend of Zelda came out on the NES and I could play this game and it could inspire all of these amazing ideas in me that would carry me through well into my adult life. And I've been able to play every single Zelda title that has released subsequently uh, up to present day. And I love that. I thank God that I get to be alive during the the time of Zelda and Link is my hero he has inspired many of the choices that I've made in my life including coming out to Hollywood California to be a sword fighter it makes no sense in life to do that but I wanted to Link went, set out on all these adventures and I wanted to also in the original game voice acting wasn't a thing we had these little text blocks that come up that were bare bones translated from the original Japanese text and we would read them and at least for me I fully formed what these characters sounded like in my own mind and we think of Link very often now as not having a voice but I Link always had a voice to me it was my voice when when some people play Legend of Zelda they name him Link I was never that guy when I played Legend of Zelda, I named Link TJ. I wanted to go on that adventure. I wanted to do that. And the thought of the voice acting in the game taking me out was never something that even occurred to me because it was never a thing. 
We didn't have it in the regular NES. We didn't have it in A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. It was not there in any of the the uh, handheld games, Link's Awakening or the Oracle games. It wasn't until the N64 that we had any kind of talking, and it was through the ferry. We had Navi who would say, hey, listen, which drove some people nuts. I, I didn't mind it, never bothered me, uh, because she called my attention to whatever it was that she wanted me to see, and maybe she said it a lot, but that was okay. It didn't really stick out. Uh, I did notice, however, when I was playing Wind Waker for the first time on the GameCube, that Link did say a few things, and I wouldn't say that it took me out of the experience, but it did certainly catch my attention. He would be like, come on, or something like that, or just these really short little things. It did not detract from the overall experience, but yet I immediately recognized, oh, he's saying stuff. It's stuff that I would probably say under similar circumstances, but suddenly a voice had been applied to a character where previously all of the talking he had ever done was me and the mental conversations that I had with the characters who had uh, text speech. So I could read things like, uh, take this, uh, or it's dangerous to go alone, take this, and I, I didn't have any problem imagining what that sounded like. Or it's a secret to everyone. I totally got it. It was totally fine. But now we're moving into an era where talking in video games is commonplace. And it's a little bit, for a lot of people, antiquated to not have that. So with Legend of Zelda, I think Nintendo finds themselves in a really precarious situation. If you continue to not uh, provide voice acting, then maybe to modern gamers, you're, you could be perceived as being out of touch or, or out of date or behind the times. But for gamers who grew up with the, this precedent for the game being in text, I've already invented in my head what Link sounds like. I've already invented in my head what Zelda sounds like. So when you start to define those things in a very specific way, it is guaranteed that some people's impressions are going to be betrayed. How I think of Zelda or how I think of Link may not be how you think Zelda or Link sounds. And so what might enhance the experience for me turns you off or the other way around. So in Nintendo's defense, and at first I'm gonna take the anti-voice angle. And uh, it's because we have heard Link and Zelda talk before. And this goes all the way back to when I was a kid and Link's voice was not that pleasant. He would frequently tout this catchphrase, excuse me, princess. And there's not a kid who grew up in the 80s or the 90s that was a Zelda fan who had not heard that. And to some people it's kind of kitschy and campy and it's a good memory. To me, I did like the show, I'm not gonna lie. But not because of what the show provided, but because of what I brought to the show. And then in hindsight, watching it as an adult, I'm like, ugh, that's not my Link. I, when I think of Link, he is not this uh, bumbling, incompetent, sarcastic guy. He, I think of Link as, as somebody who is heroic and courageous and lets his actions do the talking. And when his actions cannot do the talking satisfactorily, I do the talking for him. So it's hard for me to imagine a way for Nintendo to provide a voice for Link and it not in somehow be a letdown for me. I'm sure there are people who have a similar impression. Now, if they were to provide voice acting for the other cast members, like Zelda or a Groose, or a Ganondorf, or some of the other characters that appear in the game, particularly characters who are, are new, who I, I haven't grown up with some impression in my mind of what they sound like, I would immediately accept it. I, I think we all know what Midna sounds like, because she doesn't really speak in English, but we know what she sounds like. And Fi is another example. She might not speak in English, but 
or, or in any language properly, but we still kind of know what her voice sounds like through that weird gibberish that they, they tout throughout the game. And if they had a voice that was speaking the lines that just had the same vocal quality as that gibberish, I, I'm sure we would accept it. But you, you get into a category with these action-adventure games where, for me, video games are, are proactive storytelling. You can read a book, which is pretty passive, but you, you are forced to characterize what people look like and sound like on your own. For, let's assume it's not a picture book, and let's assume you're not listening to an audio recording, you're providing what the voices sound like in your head, and even if you have uh, a pretty detailed description of what a person looks like, you're still conjuring that image in your head. A movie is a very passive experience where all of the information is provided for you. You don't need to do anything. A picture is worth a thousand words. It sure is. It takes a thousand words to describe what this room looks like, which your eyes can absorb in a second. Or you can take two pages to describe what a character looks like, and then in one second you can identify that in a movie or a TV show or a picture. In a video game, not only do you have this story being presented to you, but you have direct control over the progression of this story. So it's kind of the highest form of entertainment in that you are receiving the images and the sounds, but you're also the person who's driving the action. That's why movie video games are always a letdown, is it's a diminished experience. You're taking something that is very proactive, that you're controlling, that you have direct influence over, and reducing it to something that you just have to be a passenger in and sit back and watch. So, I don't know why people are constantly surprised that they're let down, that their favorite video game is somehow a less satisfying movie experience. Of course it is! Because you're not engaged in the same way. There's a, a barrier that removes you from the experience. With the video games, personally, the dialogue does not motivate my action as much as the situation does. So when a story is motivated by uh, action and decisions that I have to make, I don't need it to be driven by dialogue. I, I want the, the situations to determine the story. I want it to be an action-driven story and not a dialogue-driven story. And Zelda does a really good job of that. Sometimes you're given very small bits of information to push you to that next step that you need to take to continue your adventure. It's not the same as needing to hear minutes upon minutes of explanation or uh, exposition. You, you kind of can figure it out really quickly so you get back to controlling the action. So for me, while I'm not fundamentally opposed to Legend of Zelda or video games in general having voice acting, there are times when it, it can really be a double-edged sword. It can enhance the experience when it's done really well and it seems like it's deeply integrated in the experience. But when it's something that doesn't mesh with what you think it should be and when you have everybody who thinks something should be a different way, that's a tough thing to achieve. Zelda's in that tough spot right now. I know that at E3, we got a little bit of a taste of what uh, Breath of the Wind, Call of the Wild, Breath of Fire, Breath of the Wind? Breath of the... Sheesh! Breath of the Wild. Uh, we, we had a little bit of voice acting in the trailer. To what extent that's going to carry out throughout the game, I don't know. We also had some text in the game that was that did not include voice acting. Maybe it's going to be some kind of incremental addition where Nintendo's testing the waters with a soft inclusion of dialogue, see how people respond to it, and then maybe if the response is positive, that can be expanded upon in subsequent Zelda titles. That seems like the safest route to me. Uh, giving Link a voice, I don't know. That would be a, that would be a tall order for any voice actor.
to have to encapsulate everybody's impression of how Link should sound, that's tough. Uh, even some of the main players in that series, like Zelda or Ganondorf, while not as tough, I, I think that that's, that's a tall order. So I'm curious to see how it goes and how, how integrated it is in that title. But I'm also really curious to know, what do you guys think? Should Nintendo be actively seeking ways to incorporate voice acting into more of their games? In Splatoon, they talk in this funny, cute, gibberish. Animal Crossing, they have this very charming animalese that uh, it sounds like they're talking, but really it's nonsensical. The Mario games probably have the most voice acting, and and we've been hearing Mario talk for a long time, and obviously Charles Martinet is amazing, and he is Mario. We love him as Mario. He, he completely embodies that character in every way, and Luigi and Waluigi and Wario. He's, he's the guy when it comes to that. But so far, it's hard for me to imagine a link that could be satisfying to all. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me if you feel like Nintendo is missing opportunities by not including voice acting in more of their games or if you think that they should continue to tread carefully and just test the waters a little bit at a time so that they can not only invite in modern gamers but also to include gamers who are old school like myself, cl classically trained back to the early days of the NES where it wasn't even an issue, it wasn't an option, so it wasn't a thing. We didn't even consider it. And Or, or do they really need to maintain the tradition of not having voice acting? Is, is that more in keeping with what they need to do so that they can allow the player to impose their impressions of the characters instead of kind of spoon feeding you or force feeding you rather uh, what a character should be like if that defies how you think that character should be. Uh, also, let me know what you think about this show. Is it something that you care to see? Uh, it may never come again. This may be the only episode of it. Uh, but if it does happen, it'll probably be on towards the end of the week, maybe a, a reoccurring Friday thing, maybe weekly, maybe bi-weekly. Maybe you don't appreciate the talking head that is TJ and you never want to hear me open my mouth again. You think I should keep my opinions to myself. Uh, I, I would like to know that too. But if this is something that uh, you enjoy, and then maybe we can continue to have this me time together. You and me. Me and you. So if you, if you made it this far, thanks for listening to my thoughts. Now, let me hear yours. And hopefully I'll get to have a little bit more me time with you. Thanks for playing.